Welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we'll be telling you about the Apple testing interview questions and answers. So I have comprised a digital product. And this digital product has been created, which contains uh, the testing interview questions and ask, answers uh, for the Apple company. So many of my subscribers, they have given the interviews at Apple. And uh, this was one of the question that was asked. So let us discuss that question today. So the question was, how do you describe the best practices for the API validation? So let's say you have got an API to be validated, okay? And that API response needs to be validated. So what are the best practices that you will take care of? Many of us are already aware about the best practices from the uh, UI automation perspective, but so far, looking at the API response side from the API perspective, it's very important. So in the companies like Apple, Amazon, or in many other companies also, they have started asking more and more questions on API automation. So if you are preparing from the interview perspective for UI automation, please be prepared for API automation as well. So first of all, what we will do is we will define the test cases. See, it is very important that you should know what are the endpoints to be tested. Okay, what is the uh, scope of your testing? Okay, which are the different endpoints that you will have? Which are the different requests that you want to send? Right, so all those things you have to consider in the, at the as a part of this particular testing itself. Right, then you will send the API request. So you'll be sending different API requests. Maybe they will be having with different methods. Someone is get, someone is post, someone is put. You have to check if if you can automate them, right? Using Pojo classes. At the same time, you also have to validate whether those uh, APIs with the methods are working fine, right? The status code validation. So the different status codes that come into the picture from the API validation point of view, that is 200, or you can say 201, or is it giving you proper uh, error codes in case of problems as well, for example, 401, 404, right? Unauthorized error. So all those error codes you have to verify. The response body validation, right? What content you're getting in the response body? So that's also important. Okay. Are you getting the proper content or is it just displaying a garbage value in the response body. So the, all those things you have to validate. Now see, these are the best practices that we are seeing. There is also very necessary that when you are in an interview, you should be able to recall these kind of things, right? Because generally it happens, the people go blank in an interview, right? They get blank because of, they get nervous and they feel that uh, they will not be able to crack the interview. So I'll give you a very important uh, tip and trick here to remember these things. So you can consider this kind of statement. Don't send silly response, right? Don't send silly response. So you can take D for defining test cases, S for sending API request, S for status code validation, right? Response, R stands for response body validation, right? And And also add don't send silly responses along with this we can also add in this is screen sharing not fast into that particular statement in order to remember these kind of things so you can also add like, don't send silly response, hold your emotion, right? Hold your emotions or hold your uh, real emotions also you can say, right? So that's very important. That's a funny way how you can remember these kind of things. H stands for header validation, R is coming again. So you can consider for response time checkpoint, error and edge case handling. So this is more about the negative testing. Right? Every time it has been seen that people just 
or form the positive aspect of testing and then they move ahead. So you have to consider the negative validation also, the edge cases, the corner cases, those are very important because the moment you will leave them, the client will test and report a bug to you. That's for sure, right? So corner cases, negative test cases are very important as a part of testing. Don't ignore them, right? You have to consider them in the scope of the testing itself. Response time check, how much time is it taking to respond back to you? Right? How much time is it taking? Is it two seconds? Is it two minutes? And if it is taking two minutes, is it return in the user story as well? Right? So that's very important. It might take more time, but it is not documented and then it's raised as a defect. So you should raise such issues. And if you see that uh, the development team or the product management team are not hearing to you, then at least you get it documented from their side and you send them an email. It should be done officially. It should be not off the records, everything needs to be documented, everything should be concise, and nothing should be working on the verbal communication. Header validation, right? Header validation, so what kind of headers you have, right? Whether it is application, JSON, content type, and all those things you have to consider in your testing itself. So these are the best practices that you have to follow whenever you are validating API responses, right? Very important. And uh, it's not only just about API responses, it's also about API automation. If you have to test any API, what should be your approach? What are the best practices and standards that you should follow? And in order to remember this, you can also remember this funny line, don't send silly responses, hold your real emotions, right? At times we get worried, at times we get frustrated, at times we get stressed that the developer is not listening to us, the API is not working and I have timeline to complete. We have a demo on this Friday, but nothing is getting completed. So you can uh, remember these kind of things and uh, hold, hold on your real emotions and start raising defects, start documenting the things rather than sending silly responses or saying silly things to the development team, All right? So this was a short video on how you can verify the APIs from the testing perspective. This was recently asked in the Apple company for the testing position. So one of my subscribers got an opportunity to go to the Apple company and the question was asked to him. So there are eight to 10 questions that you will get in this digital product. You can avail this uh, product. I will be I will be putting the link of the product in the comment section as well as in the description of the video, right? That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates.